from Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute, Wisconsin, wrapping up day four of the 2016 Division III World Series. I'm Pat Coleman, joined by Jim Dixon, our D3 baseball guru on D3Baseball.com. And guess what? We are finally all caught up at the uh, Division III World Series. We got uh, three of our two games in today. Remember, uh, St. John Fisher and LaRoche could have started at 11.59 p.m. last night with barely any field prep and no warm-up, but uh, the committee sent him home at 11.30 at night, brought him back for a, uh, a game at uh, 10 a.m. this morning, uh, and we got uh, the rest of our games. TarpCon was at 5 all day. Uh, it was beautiful, sunny, nothing on the radar, and finally, for once, Jim, fantastic day for baseball here in Appleton. It really was. Um, I was enjoying it. In fact, our press box was actually getting a little warm. Um, but it's, um, the fans came out, enjoyed the sunshine, enjoyed some great ball games. We started off with uh, that elimination game that uh, got held over from uh, Sunday uh, between LaRoche and St. John Fisher, uh, the, the, uh, the group that would, uh, were battling off to see who was going to get to face Keystone for a shot at getting into the championship series. Remember, these are two four-team pods or four-team sub-brackets that each have a double elimination, uh, and then the winners of each meet in a best-of-three championship series. Uh, and LaRoche came out, uh, they put up a four spot in the third, they put up three more in the fourth after St. John Fisher had answered with a couple of runs and, and LaRoche almost was able to pretty much cruise from there. Um, every time um, the Cardinals scored runs, um, the Red Hawks were back scoring some more. So they really never gave um, St. John Fisher a chance to get into the ballgame. Well, Roach uh, really got a lot of production from the bottom third of its lineup in that opening game on uh, Monday afternoon. Tyler Craig, the number nine hitter, three for four with a couple of runs scored, three runs batted in. Uh, Shane Roebuck with a pair of hits. Ian Velez with a pair of hits, one of them a home run, one of them a, a great save on a hit and run opportunity late in the game, which led to the two runs that uh, LaRoche scored in the bottom of the eighth, which was cushion they desperately needed because St. John Fisher came back with two more uh, to cut that lead to three at the end. Um, Coach Rowe was right. Um, these players are down at the bottom of the lineup for a reason. Um, they play great defense, but they just don't hit as well. Um, but it was nice to see them coming through and getting the recognition um, of the, all the hard work they've had throughout the season. St. John Fisher's season ends at 39 and 13. Terry Engels got the start for the Cardinals. He got knocked around quite a bit, and he didn't get a lot of help from his defense either. Three errors early on in the game for the Cardinals led to three unearned runs. Engels goes three and a third, gives up seven, four of them earned. On the winning side, it was Ethan Lewis picking up his second win against two defeats. He went six for the Red Hawks and uh, gave up two runs. Walked five, uh, but struck out two and uh, got in there, stayed in long enough for the victory. LaRoche advanced to the later game in the afternoon. We'll come back to them because in between we had the uh, winners, uh, the not the winners bracket championship game. Wow. This is the uh, the World Series returnees bracket championship game. How about that? Can I it, call it that? You can call it that. <laughs> Good, because I just did. Uh, Trinity uh, needed to beat Cortland once today. They did it the first time out. They defeated the Red Dragons 5-2. to A couple of key notes here. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, this ends Cortland State's Title defense, this is their, uh, they got back to this point in the series, trying to go back to back in national championships, came up a little bit short. Uh, Trinity, you know, uh, all season, all tournament really, Jim, uh, known for the long ball, they went really small ball. They needed to go really small ball against Cortland on Monday. Um, in, indeed they did. Um, you look down, um, they're taking pitches in the side. Um, they're sacrificing runners across. Sacrifice flies accounted for a couple's runs. Um, Trinity, you know, I want to see them a power team, but today they were a small ball team. They got a huge relief performance from freshman Andrew Hoffman. He went the final three and a third. Uh, gave up three hits, did walk four, so he put some runners on base, but uh, three and a third scoreless innings to pick up save number five on the season. He preserved the win for Teddy Turner, who went the first five and two thirds uh, to improve to seven and two. On the opposite side, Cortland uh, put out Nick Benedetto, who's you know a guy who's, you know, you're getting this at this point in the tournament, right? You're getting to your third and your fourth pitcher. Um, you know, he had a, a, a a gamer type of performance. Uh, picked up his first loss on the season. They went six and a third, uh, gave up four runs. And Joe Brown was really uh, raving in the post-game news conference about the performance of DiBenedetto. Um, he really had a great game. Um, and he gave the Red Dragons a, the pitching performance that they needed to stay in. Unfortunately, 
Um, they had some issues on the base pass. They did. Uh, a couple of runners got gotten down at the plate. Conrad Zemendorf got sent uh, from third or sent from second to, to try to score. Back in the fourth inning, he was cut short, uh, ending a Cortland rally, which had already put two runs across. And then in the bottom half of the ninth inning, uh, actually, I thought it was a nice move by, uh, by Joe Brown, the Cortland coach. First of all, uh, Keith Andrews, a senior who's had only 35 at-bats all season, didn't play here in the championship last year and hadn't played in uh, Appleton so far in 2016. Uh, he sends him up to pinch hit with two out and the base is empty, down by three. Um, the guy's uh, batting 200 on the season coming in. He draws a walk, uh, and then the guy behind him, as you flip over to the top of the order, um, well, where are we? I'm, I'm lost. There was Steven Figueroa in the heart of the lineup, hits a double down the left field line, and Brown, uh, even though the heart of the lineup is coming up with some big bats, Brown sends Andrews, and Andrews gets cut down by uh, about a foot and a half at the plate with uh, what would have still left the uh, team down by two, and Brown really uh, fell on his sword for his decision coaching third base. Um, he really did, and you were got to respect the coach to sit there. When he makes a mistake, he's going to be upfront about it, and it's... Um, who knows what happened if the two big guns had gotten the chance to sit there and um, move the game along. Brown really was really upfront about it. That was his opening remarks in the post-game news conference. He didn't even wait for anybody to ask him the question. He was, uh, that was his uh, take on it. So Cortland ends its season at 43 and eight. Trinity advanced, uh, they improved to 42 and seven. So they go on to the best of three championship series. But there was one piece of, uh, the puzzle yet to be determined, and that was uh, between Keystone and LaRoche. Remember, Keystone comes in uh, to this game on Monday afternoon, uh, having gone 2-0 and here in the tournament so far. They only needed to beat LaRoche once. LaRoche needed to win two games, and uh, only one of those games could have been played today uh, because of scheduling. Basically, if LaRoche had won that game, they weren't going to make LaRoche come back and play a third game today to try to, uh, to try to force their way into the championship series. And what happened was LaRoche got a fantastic pitching performance from Nick Tunstall. The guy went seven innings, gave up just five hits, walked one, gave up one run, and he left with a 4-1 lead. And then, you know, just things kind of fell apart for Keystone. As, as, as disheartening as it would be to witness that ending of the game if you're a Cortland State fan, uh, LaRoche, let's see, gave up two in the eighth, gave up one in the ninth, and then in the tenth inning with two outs, uh, the catcher overthrows a drop third strike to first base. The batter reaches base safely. And then a ground ball down to third. And uh, David Lemley makes actually a fantastic sliding backhand stop and then just air mails the ball 10 feet over the first baseman's head. First baseman didn't jump, didn't run after it because the runner on third was coming down the line 90 feet for the game winning run. And they won 5 4 in one of the most bizarre walk offs in 10 innings you'll ever see here at the World Series. Um, there, LaRoche got a great opening um, pitching performance from the freshman, and if he pitches like that, there really is a bright future for the Red Hawks. Um, I like the fact that um, David Lindley, Lin, Limley is a junior, so he'll be back. Um, I would have hated to have seen this happen in his senior year, but I fully expect that we'll be seeing LaRoche Red Hawks here in the um, World Series one more time. Lemley did homer on Monday evening for his 12th home run of the season, but he committed three errors, three of the five by LaRoche. And uh, of the five runs that Keystone scored, only one of them earned. But really, as we were talking about this in the press box as the game was going on, especially with Keystone down four to one uh, going into those late innings, I really feel, and I, I suspect a lot of people who uh, are observers probably feel that the, the one way that uh, the opportunity that Keystone or either team had to knock off Trinity in the best of three championship series was for Keystone to win this game this afternoon, not have to use another pitcher on Tuesday and then start the championship series right away, you know, 55 to 90 minutes later. They get the opportunity to come back fresh. They know they're facing Trinity for two games tomorrow and possibly a game on Wednesday. This is a much better situation for Keystone than it would have been for LaRoche or it would have been for Keystone coming back, having to play LaRoche first tomorrow. It is. Pitching, is, pitching depth is so important. And now everybody has two, maybe three more games to play. Um, you don't want to be one pitcher behind at any time. Um, you don't want to have your number four sitting against somebody's number five um, or number three. You don't want to have your number two when they're throwing their number one. Um, it's really going to make for an even and exciting um, World Series um, championship series tomorrow. Uh, we're not going to speculate as the starting pitchers. We'll just remind you that uh, David Gray got the start in game one back on 
17 rain delays ago on Friday afternoon. He went to six and a third innings, and that would be Saturday, Sunday, Monday, three days rest, opportunity for him to come back. Now, Keystone, of course, did not throw anybody on Friday because of the rain. Uh, Felix Baez got the uh, start, and he went just six innings in that first game. If they were to bring him back at some point tomorrow, that would be on just two days rest. But both of these teams coming in at least somewhat rested. Uh, you know, they've only used, they've only played three games. Neither of them had to uh, had to play an if game. Uh, so they went 3-0 and through their uh, their portion of the sub bracket. So at least they have the opportunity to, have, to still have some fresh arms, even if they are at the back end of their rotation. When I had a chance to talk with the um, Keystone coach um, just before the season, just before the World Series started, he said, this is the bracket I could be in win it. And certainly he um, was pro pro prolific. Um, he, he forecast it right. I thought it was interesting, too. Um, I didn't get an opportunity to ask this of Matt Scannell after Trinity's win, but, you know, Scannell has been talking all week about, you know, we're facing such great teams. This is like Division Three royalty, you know, facing Cortland, the defending national champs, Wisconsin lacrosse, who went to the championship series last year. This is what Division Three is all, you know, who, who the top teams are in Division Three. The other half of that bracket, you know, there's not been a lot of people who have been giving the same kind of accolades to the folks like uh, Keystone and LaRoche and St. John Fisher. Um, they have not gotten the attention. Um, certainly when you have four of the top six teams playing in one bracket, um, and on the other bracket, everybody is 11 or lower, um, people are going to say, wow, one bracket is much more stronger. Um, but I can't go... I can't finish tonight without sitting and congratulating um, Coach Scannell for his 600th win. Um, he, he downplayed it. Um, I think he's really looking for 602. If he has, he'll have an opportunity to get both of them tomorrow on Tuesday afternoon. First game starts at 11 p.m. Central Time here. Weather permitting, of course, as always. We'll probably go into the overnight at about TarpCon 3, just looking at what the, uh, what the radar looks like uh, or could look like, or not even radar, but the advanced weather projections. I, weather is handled elsewhere within the organization. I don't deal with weather uh, so well. Um, and, uh, and then, so they'll play the first game at 11. Second game will follow about 50 minutes thereafter. So there's a possibility that we could crown a champion and walnut and bronze could be handed out here in Appleton on Tuesday. If the team split on Tuesday, they'll come back and play a third deciding winner take all game uh, starting at 11 a.m. or whenever weather allows them to on Wednesday morning. For Jim Dixon, I'm Pat Coleman. That's day four, Monday, Memorial Day. Thanks for everyone for your service, and thank you for tuning in to this runner up, rundown, wrap up, and recap of the uh, Sunday and Monday in Appleton.